track. We'll start the show talking about the misuse of power, not the abuse of power. I don't think it rises to abuse, but it's arguably misuse. So Jalen Brown doubled down on his Nike theory, which is the reason he is not on the Olympic basketball team is because of Nike. I think he's right. It should be noted, he's the best player in the league, not on the team. He's not a Nike guy. Kyrie Irving's the second best player in the league, not on the team. He got dropped by Nike in 2022. I don't think it's a coincidence. Nike right now has a leadership issue, and I was in Beaverton, Oregon this weekend going to the zoo, not Nike, in Portland. Um, they butchered the Major League Baseball jerseys. It, it's as bad a gaffe as I've ever seen in my life uh, on, on jerseys by a sports apparel company. And Nike usually gets it right. Their stock is down 33% in six months. Phil Knight is now 86. He's a visionary and a brilliant man, but he acknowledges he is all in on Oregon football, winning them a natty in the NIL. And now they have the Olympic mess. It feels like there's a leadership issue as Phil Knight ages. This happens all the time in corporate America. There has always been this very tricky dance by Nike and sports apparel companies. You want to use the velvet hammer, not the sledgehammer. You have massive power in college and professional sports. You don't want to abuse it. And I don't think this rises to abuse of power. It's the Olympics. It gets political. It was political, MJ and Isaiah Thomas. But it does feel like an overstep, an overreach by Nike. Jalen Brown not being on the team is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The finals of the MVP... Uh, MVP of the finals and the Eastern Conference finals. He's a tremendous basketball player. Nike, a misuse of power. The second misuse of power we have seen this week, LeBron James in clutch sports. They engineered Bronny getting drafted with a number 55 pick. Now, it was a terrible draft, and anybody drafted there was going to be a G-leaguer at best. But Brawny offensively doesn't even look like a G-leaguer. It's been embarrassing. He's 0 for 14 on threes. He was bad again last night. Now, I do think athletically he can be a defender in this league. Maybe. But he would not have been drafted if not for LeBron James and Clutch Sports. In a good draft, can't draft him. This team, the Lakers, can't really waste draft picks. But they do need on-ball defenders. They're old in spots, expensive in others. He's cheap and can defend. That I don't deny. But in both the case of Nike and the case of LeBron James, they had power. Power can corrupt. Men, men tend to flex. Anytime they have power, they use it, misuse it, or abuse it. This classifies as misusing it. And this is the classic dad, the classic parent trying to muscle his kid to get a job that he didn't really earn and kind of getting in the way the natural flow of life, usurping somebody, getting power, jamming a kid in. You know how many times I've been asked, hey, can you get my son, my daughter a job at blankety blank blank? And my, and my answer is always, I can get him an internship maybe. I can't get him a job. They're not qualified. It hurts. It's painful. It's the truth. So both Nike, Clutch Sports, and LeBron had leverage. And in my opinion, this is the downside to it. Brawny's been sort of embarrassing so far. Now, the Lakers are in a position where the new coach, J.J. Redick, now has to go to the microphone and tap dance to make sure he says all the right things about Brawny. He's a development player. That's how we're looking at Bronny. He's certainly going to spend time with the Lakers. He will spend time as well uh, in the G League. We're going to develop his shot. We'll develop his ball skills. He's already got a great feel. He has a really good uh, instinctive nature on the defensive end. Okay, that's a good way of saying he can't shoot. Be careful when you accumulate power how you use it. Just because you have it. Sometimes it's best 
to let the natural flow of business work. Just let things play out as they would without your power. So I have joked, kind of, sort of, not really, that I do think if I didn't do this for the living, the broadcasting thing, and I would have spent the last 30 years trying to be an NFL executive, not broadcasting, I just started going toward the NFL, I think I'd be a pretty good executive. I know I would not have drafted Jamarcus Russell, Johnny Manziel, Daniel Jones, Zach Wilson, Tim Tebow in the first round. I would have drafted Sam Darnold, though, and he may still have something. But one of the reasons I think this is I hear things all the time around the NFL, and it sounds like they're coming from unserious people. Here's the latest. An NFL executive rips Josh Allen, one of the more overrated players, makes a lot of mistakes. Oh, good God. Somebody seriously said that. So I have a theory on life. Would you ever tell your kids in life, hey, Johnny, hey, Susie, play it safe. Don't make mistakes. Don't take any big swings. And if you do make a mistake, punish yourself. Life's about being perfect. No, it's not. Life's about being a playmaker and taking swings. And it's okay whether you're an artist or a quarterback or a point guard to have turnovers. Josh Allen is transformative. He's won his division four straight years. And in those four years, he has the most touchdowns ever by any player in the history of the sport, even more than Patrick Mahomes. Until last season, he had no run game, no consistent run game. Outside of left tackle, the offensive line's been a revolving door of players. And for the record, he's on his third offensive coordinator in seven years. But Josh Allen doesn't play it safe. Patrick Mahomes sometimes throws it left-handed or sidearm. You want to know who also had a lot of interceptions? Peyton Manning and Brett Favre and John Elway and Dan Marino and Joe Namath and Josh Allen. Point guards, business people, politicians, quarterbacks. Don't play it safe. You're not just distributors of messages. You're playmakers. The greatest quarterbacks, many of them, Brady's an exception, Mahomes a little bit too, have thrown lots of picks. I think the issue with Josh Allen is there are two defensive coaches in this sport that are very good, Mike Tomlin and Sean McDermott. The latter is Josh's coach. And both those coaches have struggled developing consistent run games, hiring the right offensive coordinator, and getting the O-lines right. Both of them. Offensive coaches speak a different language. That's why it's such an advantage for Mahomes or Joe Burrow or initially Kyler Murray or Tua that went from Brian Flores to Mike McDaniel. The defensive coach benched Tua. The offensive coach made him a pro bowler. Dak, O-line, run game, Jason Garrett. It's such an advantage to have, it's a different language, an offensive coach when especially you're a young quarterback. You're making mistakes. You need to be refined. Josh Allen needed Brian Dable. You think Daniel Jones makes the playoffs without Brian Dan, uh, Dable? So this is not about mistakes. This is a quarterback that's overcome no run game revolving door offensive line, third different coordinator, and a defensive coach who is not a bad coach, but like Mike Tomlin, doesn't have a great feel for offensive elements of the game. Sean McVay and Andy Reid have rebuilt offensive lines in one offseason. The Steelers are tr still trying to get theirs right over the last six years. But this goes back to a fundamental belief. What an awful thing you could tell your kids in life is to play it safe. Don't elevate others. Don't take big swings. Be paralyzed by any mistake. The great point guards, the great quarterbacks, the great politicians, the great business people, Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, often talk about the value of going for it. 
the process of learning from mistakes. Yes, Josh Allen throws some ugly picks, but over the four years that he's won the division, he's the most productive player in the history of the sport. And some knucklehead is saying, you know, it, that guy's overrated. I'd argue he's underrated. He just doesn't quite have all the elements offensively that you need to beat maybe the greatest quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, and the greatest coach, arguably Andy Reid of all time. It's Phil Mickelson playing in Tiger's prime. It's Akeem Olajuwon playing in Jordan's prime. He won when Michael left. Part of Josh Allen's issue, Andy Reid and Mahomes may go down as the greatest quarterback coach combo in league history. Brady Belichick were, and it kept Peyton Manning out of a lot of Super Bowls. That was not a knock on Peyton Manning. It was a reality on Brady and Belichick. All, all fight, I'll die on this hill. Josh Allen, to this point, the criticism is silly. He's underrated. If you redrafted everybody in this league, Mahomes won, Josh Allen two. Those would be the first two picks. There'd be no defensive players, no special teams players, no wide receivers. You could draft today. Burrow wouldn't get picked injuries. Lamar wouldn't get picked playoff success, lack of it. If you redrafted every guy in this league today, it would be number one Mahomes and number two Allen. And the only reason Mahomes would be drafted over Allen, if you redrafted, there'd be pressure to take him because he's got all the trophies and Allen doesn't. All right. Just the start today. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I, I haven't even fired on all cylinders yet. Got me, got me all worked up on that. Okay. So we've said this um, for years and years, if you look at bad sports teams, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and they're bad for 30 years, it's not the coach, it's not the general manager, it's not the scouts. It's the ownership. And the New York Knicks, for the last couple of years, have been very well run. Coming up next, uh-oh, potential problems. You've put it off long enough. It is time to replace those tires. Tire Rack will elevate your drive. It's what they've done for